This is what I calculated. You know, in rook e8 on bishop d3 or f3, this just, again, this didn't look so amazing to me. I mean, there's stuff like with knight, knight f6 here, but um, none of this is... Yeah, I mean, if you go here, I mean, I can I can play rook e8, or, or I mean, yeah, you can play bishop e4, right? I mean, there were some lines like this, you know, where I get to take an f6 at some point, but of course, this is not what white wants, right? It's not why white, white is playing, like knight d2. And and what happens after knight f6 in that line at the end? Let's see. Like, instead of bishop f3, can you take? Yeah, there's, there's some weird thing. So it's like knight, knight f6, rook f6, right? Bishop so like takes, bishop takes queen, takes, queen takes, and qu there's queen c7, which of course helps white, but like like who knows what this is? Hmm. And you're only up in exchange, right? The king is out in the open. I mean, I'm sure white is better, but you know, it's not it's not the kind of better I wanted, you know, <laughs> like uh, with the king on e1. So I played d5. Uh, no, I'm sorry. On f6, I played d takes e6. I was really um, focused on not allowing black to um, take advantage of the move bishop h3 in any way at all. You know, like every, if you notice, like every move I made, I was trying not to let him play bishop f5. Because that's really the sole idea behind the move bishop, f, uh, bishop h3. So on f6, I just eliminated the defender of the f5 square. Now, of course, you know, okay, here's an example of where the knight on h7 gets trapped. You know, something like this. That's why it's useful not to trade the light squared bishops. So he can't take the pawn, and he can't take this way either because the bishop gets trapped. So for now, I just got back my uh, the pawn I had sacrificed. He plays knight c6, which is kind of the minus behind taking on e6, is that actually this knight gets to develop, and now b4 is hanging, and it gets kind of messy, right? But um, So I played f4. Knight takes e6. And you know, at this point is where I did my calculation, like my big calculation till like the end of the game, pretty much. Like, um, so f4, knight takes e6, and rook g3. I, I just wanted to trap the bishop, you know, show that there were some drawbacks to this move. Knight takes b4 is forced. I mean, there's actually, that's not true. No, maybe knight takes b4 is actually where he went wrong. You know, I looked at this very briefly with a computer, and this is actually an idea I saw during the game. He had some move like queen c8 or d7 some funny defense like that and and i saw this move and i really just didn't have time to calculate it out because um, i know i think he played knight before kind of quickly i mean just some, some idea to have some tactics and rook takes h3 maybe knight f4 um he did something similar he played knight takes b4 and then queen a8 i mean if you start with queen a8 right here then probably i can just go bishop c3 and Black didn't really help their cause too much. Because the bishop is still trapped, and you know, this way I didn't even lose the b4 pawn. But this move, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, what? I just remember that this might have been the only chance for black. Unless you could go queen a8, bishop c3, bishop g2. In some kind of discovery. Interesting. That's not going to work. The problem... It's... Yeah, you got queen g6, right? Yeah, queen, queen g6, although you're defending that. Queen g6, bishop d3 is an idea, you mm, know? Mm, mm. It's kind of funny because I can, um, yeah, I have that nice idea, but queen g6, bishop d3 is probably quite strong. What, what but also queen g6, you just threatened to take the bishop. <laughs> uh-huh. Did you say knight takes b4 was a move instead of queen g7? And then queen yeah, he, he did play knight takes b4, which... Queen yeah. Which looked, you know, very plausible. You know, again, like very concrete, calculating. You're trying to set some problems for me with the calculation part. But um, what's the idea of this move? So it's the idea is, first of all, it probably is like knight takes f4, isn't it? Something like that. You get a lot of pawns for the piece. I guess we could say that, you know. Yeah, it's just that you don't, it's still two, um, it's still two pieces. Well, you get two pieces for the rook, right? 
And maybe you're right, maybe it's a good move. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Yeah, so what can we say about this position? Yeah, you want to take an h2. Maybe knight f3. Knight f1 is possible, the problem is it's a bit passive. Yeah. I can't move the bishop because e3 is hanging. Queen e4. Queen e4 is interesting, yeah. I mean, there's knight b4. So, well... It's not so is, clear, right? Yeah, it's not, it's not so clear. Like, I mean, this is something I'll figure out when I analyze my games more thoroughly after the tournament, but this might have been his last chance. I'll show you what he missed. So, knight b4, queen b1... There were, you know, actually lots of choices for white. There was the move queen a4, which also looked quite plausible. But queen b1, queen a8. So it looks like black is trying to hold on through some tactical means. Like one idea is queen takes a1, right, a knight c2. And, you know, here's something very simple, you know, I could have done. You know, allowed something like this. And then tried to, like, trap the, the knight. You know, it's kind of funny, though. I mean, he already has two pawns for the piece, and I don't trap the knight right away. It still takes like, quite a number of moves. And, you know, the computer actually doesn't even think this is so bad for black, although it kind of looks bad to me. Um, he likes the move that I made, which is another one that um, Nisipianu missed, and I was kind of happy with this move, knight, king f2. It's an easy move to miss, you know, in your calculations because it's a quiet move, right? There's like, I don't take the bishop, and I don't take the knight on b4. Like two pieces that black has hanging, I don't take either of them. I just make a prophylactic move with king f2. And get out of all the knight c2 forks, um, get out of queen h1 check. Mm -hmm. My king is super safe in f2, and the bishop is still trapped. And this move really basically like ends the game, yeah. you know. Um, he played knight g5, you know. And I just took, took king g1. <coughs> um, bishop f5. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, here I had another choice. I had the move e4, I had the move queen b2. Here's what I calculated. Um, rook f7, this was force, and rook f3. And here it's a big problem for black because, you know, I'm threatening rook takes f5. Um, there's no real defense against that. And the only move, as far as I could tell, I mean, he didn't make the, what I considered to be the only move. You know, I was very surprised. I was just shocked. You know, but, um, you know, I, I thought he should play knight c2, right? Um, with the idea, like, getting into this resulting position. It looks like it's not so bad for black, who has actually three pawns for the piece now. But the problem is that with either bishop d3 or bishop d1, bishop d1 is probably what I was going to play, I'm trapping the knight, you know. And I thought that, you know, basically it should be a technically winning position for white, you know. Even though he has the three, piece, the, the three pawns, they're not really going anywhere so much. And I thought eventually, you know, depending on what he does, I have some ideas of going over. Or, or maybe just using my bishop to cut off the knight and, like, coming in like this, starting to attack the pawns. Um, I mean... It's actually not completely clear cut, but I thought, you know, white has good winning chances in this position, which actually might be why my move is a mistake, that on bishop f5, I made the move queen b2. Like, maybe I should have, you know, kept it in the, in the middle game and, like, played e4, you know. I kind of wanted to simplify things and just give him no counterplay at all, but obviously this is a, you know, I could just keep playing the middle game with the extra piece with this move. So... Yeah, he just had to play knight c2 here, and I guess he was so depressed about having his knight on a1 trapped like that, that, you know, he played, um, you know, he played knight d3, and I just didn't see, I didn't see the sense of that move, because now it's kind of easy. I'm threatening queen d5, and he played queen a5, and I just took on d3. And here he resigned because, you know, it's, it's easily winning after, like, in this position, you know. Um, so it was a little bit confusing what he did at the end. I think it was just one of those cases where everything you look at looks bad to you and then you wind up choosing the worst of the bad options, you know. I mean, I've done that. But, um, 
So yeah, you think bishop takes g2 is definitely a mistake? I think it? it was it was a mistake, but the real mistake is knight g5. You know what I mean? It's like it was just based on this kind of positional blunder, you know, because he didn't see the response knight d2. And after knight d2, it's like you're, you're there and you just realize your move knight g5 has no point, And now you just got to retreat everything, you mm. know, f5, knight f7 and just go back. You know, it's kind of hard psychologically. So he put himself in a very hard in a very tough psychological spot with the move knight g5. You know, he either could just defend, which is really not in his style, you know. Um, I don't think that's the way he was hoping the game would go against me. Um, and, um, or he could, you know, take his chance with bishop g2 and hope that, you know, I don't know how to attack, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So he took his chances. Yeah, that's always yeah, that nice. Great, uh, I mean, he's like 2,700. He's close. He's, he's been, close he's to, been 2, to 2,700. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I lost to him once before, you know, so kind of even the score with this game. Um, but he's just a really good player, and I was happy mm. to beat him. But here's the thing. You know, sometimes you do, you got to take into account who you're playing, you know, and what they, what, what your strengths are compared to them. Now, you know, what are my strengths compared to him? One of my strengths is that he really wants to beat me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, And people will take certain risks, you know, with that mindset and often and they're going to try to create more maybe you know for example um i think what is it against i was looking at his recent games and my coach was like uh so what does he play i'm like well he's been playing the queen's gambit accepted recently against you know i don't know anand rajabov gelfand or whatever and i was like he's not going to play that against me so the question is like what is he what has he been playing is irrelevant he's not going to play this opening against me you know even though he's been doing it um recently so yeah, actually, here's the thing, how this game ended was the ideal, or how it even proceeded was the ideal scenario I could hope for, you know, it was, it was like, I get some game where he tries to make it interesting, and somewhere I'll find my chances, you know, um, take advantage, because, you know, obviously, you know, you're, you're not going to win if you don't know how to do anything in chess, you know, you, so you got to hope you have some strengths compared to your opponents, and you have to, um, and these guys, you kind of, um, you... You wait for them to show some kind of inventiveness, some dubious inventiveness, you know? I mean, he plays a lot of sharp stuff for black, doesn't he? He does, yeah. And... Yeah, I mean, I had no idea what to expect. The last game I played against him, he played like d4, d6. You know, so it was just completely clear that there was no way to uh, expect anything. Hmm. You know, like I said, there are different kinds of people. So against someone like that, it's useless to prepare. If you're playing, you know, someone like my, like the other game that I showed you, Konikov, um, he always plays the Nimzo. You can prepare something. If you play, like, like um, today I was playing Sandipan, you, can, you have a better idea of preparing, but not as much as against Konikov. You know, so your approach has to be different, you know, than all. All three. And do you have quite a wide repertoire? Can you change easily between openings? Well, you see, um, you know, I, I've done some different things. I don't think any of them could. Okay, here's the funny thing. Okay, um, I'll, I'll tell you something about playing the 2700 players like Mr. Piano. Okay, mm -hmm. it's, um, what I thought about playing against him, I thought playing the same thing that I played against Ikonikov. Like, let's say he plays a Nimzo, maybe I should just play d4, knight of six, knight of three. E6, E3. And I was like, I asked my coach, what does he think about that? He's like, no, against this guy, you have to play principled. You know, he's going to make something happen himself. Nisi Piano. Yeah, Nisi Piano. And that's what I did. So I played Queen C2, my main move. He could, he could see like 30 games of mine in this opening, you know. And he does invent something, H6, right? So it's like, it's not a waste of time to have some kind of psychological portrait of your opponent. But, and against, you know, honestly, against all the preparation went fine. Like against Ikonikov, I think it was a good choice too. If you saw how the game went, I mean, I had my chances to win. It was only my own fault that I didn't. But in terms of how the opening I chose, how, the, um, how I managed to set the play, you know, it all works out very well. And it's like the right kind of um, player to, you know, do some slightly offbeat stuff like knight of three, e3, you know, um, which I think, I don't think it would have worked against Nisipiano. I think he mm. would have equalized better and then he just uh, would have chewed me up, you know, after that, so. Um, but yeah. Anybody else have any questions for Arena about uh, you've been here several times now? Yeah, you played. Yeah. What four times? Five times? I'm yeah, yeah. Sure. Fourth time here. Fourth time, yeah. Yeah, I love coming back here. What do you like about this tournament? I love the atmosphere. You know, I love how you know we play <laughs> and we eat and we sleep in the same place. You know, mm. I like looking outside and seeing the sea. Mm -hmm. You know, and hopefully some sunshine. I like you know, going on the balcony and seeing the monkeys. You know, yeah. <laughs> previous years I've done that more. That was like a hobby of mine. I'd go outside for like half an hour, I would just watch them, you know, take pictures. I, I'd love to see the monkeys. Um, 
And this trip has been a little bit more difficult than my previous trips, you know, because it's only last night that like, I finally got my luggage. Oh, and the other thing is, and then, the other thing is my computer broke last night. So I couldn't even prepare, you know, normally. It was, really? it was just yeah. terrible.